Deputy Presiding Officer, this week's PISA results demonstrate 16 years of SNP government failure. It shows standards declining in maths, science and reading, and our international position falling. And this has serious consequences for Scottish children. Our education system was once the envy of the world. Now, because of this government, we lag behind. In 2012, Scotland had the highest attaining students from poorer backgrounds of all four parts of the UK. In 2022, the most deprived in Scotland were the lowest attaining in the UK. How have the SNP allowed this to happen? First Minister. Uh, can I say to Anna Sauer, as I already have in all of my responses to Douglas Ross, that we take the PISA results uh, very seriously, and that's why the Education Secretary will stand up, will make a ministerial statement on what action, practical action, we will take in relation to improve numeracy and uh, literacy. But let's just look at that point uh, around uh, literacy uh, that Anna Sauer uh, references. Um, as in 2018, Scotland's score in reading in 22 was higher than the OECD average. But Anna Sauer is right, as, as was Douglas Ross, that we have to make sure that we are not on a trajectory of decline, but on an improving uh, trajectory. Let's look at in, uh, literacy in more detail. In addition, we saw that 9.6 per cent of students in Scotland performed at PISA level 5 or better in reading, which is defined by the OECD as top performers. That is above the OECD average of 7.2 per cent. Scotland's performance in reading amongst boys was also higher than the OECD average and higher than 26 other countries, including Norway, France uh, and indeed uh, Wales. Uh, 2023 SQA pass uh, rates in higher and advanced higher English were above those in 2019. And last year's achievement of Curriculum for Excellence ACEL data showed a record increase for 21-22 in the proportion of primary school pupils achieving the expected levels of literacy. So Anna Sauber, Douglas Ross and any other uh, member of this chamber has every right, of course, to question uh, those challenging, difficult uh, and poor PISA results. But please, let's not, uh, for one set of data, uh, suddenly dismiss the entirety of Scottish uh, education. That would be unfair on the excellent job, in fact, that our hard-working teachers do, but also the hard work that our pupils do day in and day out. I do need briefer responses. Anna Sauer. Our pupils and teachers are doing a great job. They're just being failed by this pathetic SNP government. That's the problem. And we do have, we do have a trajectory of decline if you look at the bar charts in that PISA study. I, I mentioned the, the stats in 2012 and 2022. That was an analysis of the PISA results by the Professor of Education, Lindsay Patterson, at the University of Edinburgh. But somehow, Hamza Yusuf thinks he knows better than the Professor of Education. He went on to say that when it comes to maths and reading, these gaps are growing. So despite the Scottish policy attention on narrowing inequality, the actual gap is getting worse. Across Scotland, our children and teachers are working flat out, but they are being failed by this SNP government. Now, vital support for pupils is absent, and the situation is getting worse. To close the attainment gap and improve the PISA rankings, we must give every student and every pupil the support they need. So can the First Minister tell us, has the number of teachers for children with additional support needs increased or decreased? First Minister. Uh, well, I don't have uh, that figure uh, right uh, to hand. When I look at the government, uh, when I look at the investment that we've made uh, in teachers, and even in the face of over a decade of UK austerity in Scotland, we have the most teachers per pupil in the UK. We have 7,573 teachers per 100,000 pupils in Scotland. Uh, that's more than the 5,684 in Labour-run Wales, and it's more than the 5,723 in the Conservative-run uh, England. And we have, of course, not only that, uh, a high number of uh, teachers per 100,000 pupils. We have the best paid teachers anywhere in the UK. This is a government which absolutely values our teaching profession. We've chosen to invest in our teachers. What I would say to Anna Sawar is that when I look uh, at uh, our, our scores, in comparison uh, to the Welsh Government. That shows, of course, that these issues are affecting every single government right across the UK, uh, the UK and across the world. That is why it is called a global pandemic. So we are investing in our teachers, we are investing in the education, education system, all against, of course, the backdrop of 13 years of austerity. Anna Sawa. I asked a really simple question about additional support needs. The number of children identified with additional support needs has risen from just over 36,500 in 2007 to over 240,000 now, but in this same period, the number of ASN teachers has fallen by over 200, leaving many children without the level of support they need. 
Now, this SNP government's record on education is a litany of broken promises, closing the attainment gap, promise broken, guaranteeing class sizes of 18 or under, promise broken, free school meals for all primary school pupils, promise broken, a digital device for every pupil, promise broken. Year after year, the SNP make promises to Scotland's children, but year after year, they fail to deliver. And after 16 years, there's no one else to blame. So will the First Minister apologise to the people of Scotland for destroying our once world-leading education system? First Minister. Presiding officer, that is exactly the type of hyperbole that I was warning members in this chamber about. Because we have one set of data, one set of data, which of course is concerning, and I accept that uh, from the opposition. But he asks, Anna Sauer asks, will I apologise? I will not apologise for ACL results that show the biggest single year fall in the attainment gap in primary schools in both numeracy and literacy. No, I won't apologise for the fact that we have more children, more young people from areas of deprivation going to university. No, I won't apologise for a record number of young people aged 19 who have now secured a university place this year. No, I won't apologise for the 94.3% of 16 to 19 year olds that were participating in employment, education or training over the past year. So yes, there are challenges. Yes, the PISA results are serious and we will reflect on that, consider those results and come forward next week with more detail on the action we will take. But because of this government's actions, because of the SNP government's actions, we have more young people going into positive destinations before and that's not something that I'm going to apologise.